Today we're talking about Lewis Hamilton ranked worst Formula One driver. The beginning of Lewis Hamilton's career in Formula One was so promising. He almost took the championship from his more seasoned rivals, Kimi Raikkonen and Fernando Alonso in 2007 when he won four races. He did win the final race the following year at the final corner of the final lap. However, a lengthy second act followed in which Hamilton's personal and professional results were put to the test. No McLaren driver finished higher than fourth in the driver's championship for the remaining four seasons. Five pole positions and a victory in Hungary showed promise, but a surprise move to Mercedes in 2013 also showed more of the same. Before the 2014 season, I wondered if Hamilton was on par with Fernando Alonso and Sebastian Vettel, the best drivers of today. At that point, I came to the conclusion that he was not. Unlike Alonso and Vettel, he was not known for dragging subpar cars to finishes they did not deserve. He was also not known for his clinical dedication to the craft. According to Tom Carey of The Telegraph, Hamilton was more well known for his flashy lifestyle and celebrity girlfriend than for his driving. However, a modification to the engine regulations marked the beginning of Act 3, as they frequently do. The Mercedes F1 W05 hybrid was evident from preseason testing to be the class of the field. Hamilton's only serious rival for the 2014 driver's title was his teammate Nico Rosberg, a throwback to 1961 when Ferrari got ahead of their rivals in the first year of a new engine formula. Hamilton maintained his focus and refused to let minor errors in qualifying or Rosberg's ramming into him influence his entire season. Rosberg went to Mirabeau at the end of qualifying in Monaco, possibly on purpose, and wrecked Hamilton's final hot lap, leaving Hamilton leading the championship. That gave Rosberg a shaft position and an immense benefit around Monaco's tight roads. After winning the race, it marked the beginning of a run of seven races in which Hamilton only won once. With just seven races remaining in the Belgian Grand Prix, Hamilton was 29 points behind Rosberg when he retired after Rosberg clipped his tire at Lacombe. But Hamilton made it clear that he was the better driver from that point on. He won five races in a row, giving him a chance to win the title in Brazil in the final race. Even though Rosberg led the race at Interlagos from the beginning to the end, Hamilton finished second after surviving a spin. This meant that finishing first or second in the final race would be enough to win the championship. In Abu Dhabi, Rosberg qualified on the pole, but Hamilton started the race better. Hamilton, who was already darting off into the sunset before Rosberg's car started to fail, worried more about getting his car to the finish than Rosberg. The victory in Abu Dhabi marked the culmination of an outstanding season in which Hamilton won 11 of 19 races and Rosberg won just five. Hamilton dominated while Alonso and Vettel struggled. The first with the car that was not competitive and the second with a teammate who was very competitive. Although the Britain's car was awarded the top spot on the grid, it did not guarantee victory. He still had to beat Rosberg, but most importantly, he demonstrated the maturity that he has occasionally lacked throughout his career. There was a claim that Hamilton had reached its peak too soon prior to the season. When he came so close to winning two championships in his first two seasons, did he ever deliver on his promise? We now know that the answer is yes. Hamilton demonstrated that he's as strong as anyone else competing in the sport. But where does Hamilton rank among the greatest performers ever? Given his title, he finished 11th with Nelson Piquet at the time, just behind Mercedes boss Nicky Lauda and Alonso. This was somewhat surprising. Since there were fewer racers in the early seasons, the rankings used percentages and per race statistics rather than absolute values to compare drivers from different eras. Alonso dropped to 12th place as a result of his poor season and Hamilton's rise to 9th place ahead of Lauda. Hamilton's now fifth on the all-time list with 33 victories, even though he has started more races than Alberto Ascari, Juan Manuel Fangio, and Jim Clark. Hamilton still has the ninth lowest winning percentage among champions. Naturally, Hamilton could easily fall back with a few bad years or a slow career end. Think of Michael Schumacher's Mercedes comeback. In any case, at the present time, that doesn't appear to be possible. Hamilton's future has as much commitment as it did when he broke into the game at 22. 
Mercedes would have the best car by a significant margin and Hamilton's already a strong candidate to win again. By the end of his career, it would not be out of the question to think that Hamilton would have won at least one more title and a whopping number of victories. In that case, we won't be talking about Hamilton's position among drivers of his generation, rather we'll be talking about his place among the best drivers in history, which he already has been part of that discussion. Maintaining his current form for a few more seasons will push him over the edge and he's already on the edge of that discussion. Hamilton joined the McLaren Young Driver program in 1998. In 2007, he became an official McLaren driver in Formula One. He is the sport's first and only black race car driver. In the 2007 season, he finished second to Kimi Raikkonen and in 2008, Hamilton won the Formula One World Championship for the first time by winning the season final race. In 2013, he agreed to drive for Mercedes. Hamilton won five more world championships beginning in 2014, including titles in 2014 and 2015. For the second time in his career, Hamilton won consecutive titles in 2017 and 2018, and he did so again in 2019. As of right now, Lewis Hamilton and Michael Schumacher share a joint record of seven World Drivers Championships. Together with American fashion designer Tommy Hilfiger and models Winnie Harlow and Haley Bieber, Hamilton launched a clothing line in 2018 called Tommy X Lewis. Lewis Hamilton has come under fire for both his actions on the track and his comments off of it throughout his career. He is frequently scrutinized for his words and frequently in the public eye. He was also a target of racial abuse from some Spanish supporters while he was racing in Spain. It was Hamilton's close rivalry with Spanish driver Fernando Alonso that promoted Spanish supporters to verbally abuse him. He admits that he is extremely competitive, which occasionally caused conflict with other drivers. Hamilton extended his contract with Mercedes by two years the week before the 2018 German Grand Prix, and it was said to have a yearly value of nearly $50 million. In support of Black Lives Matter, Hamilton announced in June 2020 that he would be competing in a brand new all-black Mercedes. Hamilton has made it clear that Formula One racing lacks diversity. I mean, he's literally the only black race car driver. In 2023, that's sad. Hamilton created the Black Arrow car, which made its debut in Austria over the 4th of July weekend as the stalled formula season got underway. But now for some fun facts about Hamilton off the racetrack. He began dating the lead singer of the American girl band, the Pussycat Dolls, Nicole Scherzinger, in November 2007. They parted ways at the beginning of 2010 to concentrate on their respective careers, but were seen together at the Turkish and Canadian Grand Prix that year. Between 2011 and 2015, the couple broke up, but they eventually got back together again in February 2015. There were also rumors that he dated his longtime friend Rihanna for some time after he split from Scherzinger. He's also said to have been with Rita Ora, Miss Finland Lada Hinsa, Miss Grenada 2007, Vivian Burkhardt, Winnie Harlow, Barbara Palvin, Hungarian model, and Sophia Ritchie. He was also romantically associated with Nicki Minaj and even went on a romantic vacation to Dubai. Some MPs have criticized Lewis Hamilton for living outside the UK and avoiding paying taxes there. Hamilton was named after Olympic run champion Carl Lewis. Hamilton, an Arsenal supporter, claimed that he would have played either football or cricket in high school if he had not pursued a career in Formula One. On to some salary highlights, Lewis made approximately $50 million from endorsements and prize money between June 2016 and June 2017. He made $51 million from June 2017 to 2018 and $55 million in the next year and a half. Hamilton was the wealthiest British athlete in 2015. He is the Formula One driver with the highest pay ever. Onto some real estate, Hamilton offered $57 million for his New York penthouse in 2019. The 8,900 square foot unit is the largest penthouse loft in the building and is in the same Tribeca building as Meg Ryan, Jake Gyllenhaal, Bella Hadid, and Justin Timberlake. In 2017, Hamilton purchased it for $43.9 million. He sold this property for $50 million in December 2021. He is said to have never lived in the unit, possibly because he also owns a penthouse house at 70 Vestry Street, not far away, that he bought in 2019 for $40.7 million. Imagine buying a house for almost $60 million and not living in it. 
That's the kind of money I'm trying to have. Built in 1860, Hamilton owns a $25 million four-story mansion in Kensington, West London with six bedrooms. In addition, Hamilton owns apartments in Monaco and a suburb of Geneva, Switzerland. The star driver in Formula One has some thoughts about the sport's future. He rose to fame from a working class upbringing, having been raised on a council estate, which is the British equivalent of housing projects. As a child, he was bullied. In order for Hamilton to pursue a career in junior racing, his father worked multiple jobs. In 2007, Hamilton signed his first professional contract with McLaren. He has a stunning net worth of $285 million, making approximately $50 million in a bad year and is going for his 8th world title. Because the sport has become a billionaire boys club, he doesn't think a young person like him could rise through the ranks of Formula 1 in today's world. In an intriguing lie detector test, Lewis Hamilton has confirmed that he will remain in Formula 1 until he has won an 8th world title. Before the Bahrain Grand Prix, the season opening race in 2023, the Mercedes driver participated in the test, and Hamilton was required to respond to a series of questions from Simon Lazenby of Sky Sports. He was asked if he would continue competing until he won a championship. The 38-year-old would become the sport's most decorated driver if he wins another driver's championship, passing Michael Schumacher in the process. However, the early signs for this season point to a disappointing weekend for Mercedes with Hamilton finishing fifth. Hamilton can be seen pausing to consider his response following Lazenby's inquiry before responding with real conviction, yes. The truthfulness of the response is then confirmed. As his Mercedes contract is made public, it appears that Hamilton will be well compensated for his time over the next few years. It's been rumored that Lewis Hamilton and team boss Toto Wolff have reached an agreement on his Mercedes contract, which could last until he is 50 years old. The current contract of the seven-time champion runs out at the end of the 2023 season, and he has previously expressed an interest in extending it. Sportune reports that the British driver will receive a two-year contract extension worth $49 million until the end of the 2025 season. In addition, he will receive a bonus of $27 million if he wins a championship. According to the Sportune report, Mercedes also offered to remain on the same $38 million salary as before, but this was negotiated up. A continuing commitment to support Hamilton's Mission 44 Foundation was an important part of the contract. The F1 legend contributes $9 million, which will increase to $16 million for the foundation. The deal is set to last until Hamilton turns 40, but there are also talks about keeping him as an ambassador for another 10 years. Hamilton would receive an additional $27 million from that. But that is all for today. Let me know who your favorite F1 race car driver is, and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you like the content and want some more on your favorite celebrities. And I'll catch you next time on The Rich Life.